All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel again. Thank y'all so much for coming over. Now, look, one of the creepiest videos I seen was uh, the way they took out Prince on The Simpsons. He got taken out. When I take when I when I say taken out, y'all know what I mean. Like before he died in real life. It happened on The Simpsons. Uh, got this video here and I always say, take these videos with a grain of salt. Believe what you want to believe. Um, again, I'm just trying to inform myself, but it says Prince was right about Diddy. Saying they kill stars before they expose all. You know, I feel like a lot of people who know things uh, either they're going to take you out or they're going to make you look crazy. So we're going to check this video out. Appreciate all the love and support with you guys coming over. I didn't know too much about Prince besides the whole Dave Chappelle thing, which came out to be true about him. Like, you know, the whole basketball and all that. Uh, other than that, I think he was a pretty quiet and private person. So let's jump right into it. Uh, they got a disclaimer. I know a lot of y'all have been wondering if there was any connection between Prince and Diddy and all the things Prince was exposing in the music industry. And allegedly, there actually was some sort of weird connection. One, because of the deal Diddy had with Warner Brothers, the record label Prince was fighting for doing the same thing Diddy did for years. Profit off the artists without giving them a dime and blackballing them for exposing him. It became such a big deal back then is ever since my third album, uh, I wasn't really taking large advances from the recording companies i was recording the albums myself in my own studio so the way i looked at it i owned the work because i paid for it and i did all the work i created it so i felt like it should belong to me that said the um, companies felt otherwise and they would always hold this contract up and say well you signed it and i say well i understand that it's not like i want to leave i just want to you know talk about this thing and see if we can't make it more fair of course, they wouldn't change because if they change, they wouldn't really exist. And that's kind of the situation. Again, I don't I don't know how he how he grew up. Uh, but like I said before, you be so excited to get this money, this money you never seen before, money you thought you would never see, you know, and all you got to do is sign your name and it's yours. But a lot of people don't really read the fine prints. It kind of just, and then they sign, like, give me my money, you know. Next thing you know, this contract you in, you can't get out of, and it's all these, you know, things that you didn't know was going to be in there. Yeah, and then guess what? You don't own the rights to your music. Yeah. We're in right today. They're not going to exist much longer. But it's not like... Uh, we're against them or anything like that. The, the idea is that we find better ways of working with one another. Um, it shouldn't be a situation where they own the album or the work. It's a, we're talking about intellectual copyright. If they're going to be indeed a delivery service, then that's fine. But even FedEx doesn't say that they own the thing that they ship. Right, Number two, right. Prince actually lent his house to Diddy for his parties, but he never attended the parties himself because allegedly Prince had his suspicions about what Diddy was doing with the free calls. Yeah, the first Diddy party I went to was wait, at- Wait, 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 what? At Prince's house? Oh no. Well, I mean, you know, rest in peace to Prince. Oh, man. And this is Jason Lee talking right here. He never attended the parties himself because allegedly Prince had his suspicions about what Diddy was doing with the free calls. Yeah, the first Diddy party I went to was at Prince's house. So you want to go to Prince's house to the Diddy party where Tyrese is performing and Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher are swinging on swings. That is what's happening on the other side of the wall. And so the one thing that makes this party different than a, a Jamie Foxx party 
or any other celebrity party that wrangles a bunch of young women or women or guys or whatever too is that Diddy didn't let you bring your security in the party. Number three, mm. Prince's estate was also involved in a lawsuit with Jay-Z who happened to be very tight with Diddy before his lawsuit. And the issue was that Jay-Z was distributing Princess's music on Tidal illegally. Well, unfortunately, it never ends well for the people who expose the likes of Jay-Z and Diddy. And record labels like Warner and Prince tried to warn us. Get seated, loves, because things are about to get even more insane with all this Diddy madness. You see, the thing about Prince is that when it came to ownership of and control over his music, Prince waged a career-long battle against any company that he felt stood in the way of artists' rights and money. And allegedly, he paid the ultimate price for that. Death. Whether Warner Brothers was involved with having him unalived or not is still up for debate. But a lot of fans definitely think that they were involved in his death. For a bit of background, Prince was signed to Warner Music in 1977 when he was just 18 years old. And even though the albums he released between 1978 and 1981 did not do that well, he was kept on the label as he was regarded as a musician that reflected well on Warner, which at the time... Um, you know, they, 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 they say... Is they have these people called star waggers, you know, like people who take out stars or celebrities, people that will come in. Like I said, again, look at the Simpsons. I don't know if they're going to show the clip in here, but you, you look at the Simpsons and it was on there. And they say this is a true thing. I mean, I ain't trying to force you to believe it, but just think, really think about that. Like how... Every time a, one of these celebrities pass away, it'd be like either in a hotel or, you know, like a bathtub or it was, it was they found like this stuff next to them, these pills. Just saying. Was a company that appeared to invest long term in serious talent. In 1982, one year after MTV launched, Prince released more music and he went top 10 in the US for the first time and became part of a new breed of musicians who understood the power of the music video as a way to market an artist and build their own iconography and mythology. At this point, fans were copying his look. And by 1984, with the release of Purple Rain, he was arguably the biggest and certainly the most exciting pop star on the planet. Now, since Prince was becoming a a greater artist, he was able to set up his own label, Paisley Park Records, which was part funded by Warner, which also handled its distribution. But he started realizing that he was getting less than he deserved, and so he started fighting for his rights. I'm sure he thought it would just be as easy as telling Warner Brothers that he wanted out, but that was hardly the case. Warner Brothers frustrated him because that's what record labels do. Then in the build-up to the release of The Gold Experience, Prince and Warner were at loggerheads over both money and his music. So he decided to take the battle public by appearing with the word slave written on the side of his face. His argument was that he was signed to Warner and they, as a result, owned and controlled his name as well as any music released under that name. He also dramatically changed his name to that of the symbol and was referred to as Symbol or Squiggle or the artist formerly known as Prince. For some time, the battle with Warner became worse. And in 1999, in a paper mag interview, Prince even spoke about leaving the company saying, I wanted to buy my masters back from Warner Brothers. They said no. So I'm going to re-record them, all of them. Now you will have two catalogs with pretty much exactly the same music, except mine will be better. And you can either give your money to WB, the big company, or to NPG. You choose. So he changed his name to the symbol so they he can like release himself legally and then go and re-record his music under that the symbol name. Very, very smart, but I don't think they liked it at all. Like imagine someone telling you you can't you can't buy back your uh, your own music. That's so crazy to me. In addition, he also spoke a lot about how the labels controlled him and other artists in many other interviews and at award shows and so on. Well, it's not your game. You didn't make the rules. So everything comes hard. And as long as you're signed to a contract, you're gonna take a minority share of the winning. A select few of us will do well, the majority will not. Mm. So as a people, we'll be considered a minority. But stop, let's take a moment and look at yourselves. There's nothing minor about you. You are a blessed people. 
You're the most talented on earth and you are still grateful. That is why upon winning in their game, you always thank God. Tonight I would like to ask one favor of you. Imagine what we'll all be like in our own game. Peace and love for one another. Prince was so serious about standing on business that in a move to reclaim his art on the internet in 2007, he announced he was going to take action against YouTube, eBay, and the Pirate Bay for unauthorized use of his music. Well, Prince eventually regained ownership of his name, and he worked out some sort of deal with Warner. But not long after that, he uh. died under very suspicious circumstances. For those who recall, when Prince died, the story was that he died at the age of 57 after being found unresponsive at his estate in Minnesota. At the time, health officials determined Prince died of an accidental fentanyl OD after unknowingly taking counterfeit Vicodin laced with the highly potent synthetic opioid. And he was found in an elevator, the same elevator he called the devil. Thing that, you know, kind of spooked me about it all what? was um, he has a song called uh, Let's Go Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. 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 And it says, don't let the elevator bring us down. Uh, One time when I was with him privately, he said, you know what the elevator is, right? No. I said, no, what's the elevator? He said, well, the elevator is the devil, right? Oh. It scared me. I don't like to talk like that, but he said that. And so for me, it was like really haunting when I read that he was found in an elevator. Of course, his death never made sense to anyone because nobody could believe that the famously clean living prince died of a painkiller OD. Health problems? Uh, that I don't know, right? What I know is that um, he was really health conscious, he was a vegan, he didn't know alcohol, I didn't know of him, uh, uh, he worked out, you know, so, you know, that, that also really, can I tell me, like, that's what I'm saying, it, it was so shocking, the way it, they, they said it happened, and I was just like, what, even though I didn't know, it just seemed weird and off, man, almost every time a celebrity pass away, you know, I, especially knowing what we know. Concerned me because it made me think that, wow, so you mean you do all these things to take care of yourself and you die so young? There were also reports that Prince was quite unwell in the weeks leading up to his death and that he even OD'd before. Apparently, Prince had been showing serious health problems within the previous weeks, having canceled shows and making an emergency landing while returning home where he got a dose of anti opiate. But people also said that if that was the case, why wasn't he under the care of a physician after allegedly OD'ing less than a month prior? And clearly, being in poor health for some time. The fact that Prince was not being treated by a doctor was very odd, as it seemed to be likely that to obtain tour dates, there would have to be an understanding that he would be capable of performing to prevent unexpected cancellations, especially at larger venues. Something else is that Prince knew they were coming for him, just like the machine has been doing over the years to people who tried to expose them. In fact, shortly before his death, Prince posted a picture of himself, which also contained a since deleted message, just when you thought you were safe. And he predicted his death, not one once but twice. I mean, during his final appearance at a party at Paisley Park, just after his reported treatment and days before his death, Prince reportedly told attendees, wait a few days before you waste any prayers. Interesting, right? Well, the general belief was that he was definitely unalived, and a lot of people have been saying this, including celebrities like Kanye West. And when it comes to Kanye, we have had people say that Kanye West is like a modern day prince because he fights for the same things Prince fought for back in the day. And nobody, this ain't independent. Yeezy's the only 100% owned uh, independent, you uh, know, uh, black owned or whatever. I don't know if be owned after this uh, after this interview, but uh, but you get what I'm saying? Like yeah. when we sign something, we don't sign somebody. We're signing someone to the bigger Vivendi slave ship, to the bigger Universal slave ship. Right. Y'all saying oh, all these tweets was crazy. Yeah. You know why Prince gave me the song Jail? Because he liked what I did. And he's like, I like what you did with them contracts. You said Prince gave it to you. Right. Man, right. he definitely, guess who's going to jail tonight? You know what I'm saying? A Gemini just, just spirit. For people who don't, because you know. he was on that tip. Yeah. Just people who don't know. You're talking about Prince Prince. Yeah, I'm talking about no. Prince. And yeah. Prince trying to get yeah. away from corporations, yeah. disconnect. Prince with the slave on his yeah. cheek. Yeah, slave on his cheek. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Michael Jackson, bro. This man. I mean, if you took late 70s, 1980s Prince and plugged him into the social media era, he would have been viewed the same way Kanye West is viewed. L.A. Reid even told Access Hollywood, people love Kanye for sure, but he's great. Great. I mean, on the level of Prince. But modern day, he's hip hop. He's not the same thing. He doesn't play guitar. He doesn't play piano. He's not that kind of performer. But for hip hop, he is a king. Okay, guys, as for where Diddy comes in, yes, if y'all recall, Diddy finally. and Warner Group inked a joint venture deal that gave the record company a 50% stake in Diddy's Bad Boy Records label. Under the deal, Warner would market and handle digital and physical distribution of Bad Boy's catalog releases worldwide, and the label's roster of current and former artists, including Mace, Mario Winans, Notorious B.I.G., and P. Diddy himself. While speaking about the deal, Diddy even said, there have been a lot of boutique record labels that come and go, and we're still here. This has ensured for the next couple of years that we have the right financial backing, the right financial structure, the right partners to remain a force in the music industry. The very same thing Prince had been fighting his entire life was what Diddy was doing to his artists. And do we really need to go through every former bad boy artist Diddy has screwed over? We already know that this list could go on for days. And allegedly, this is one of the issues Prince had with Diddy. What's even worse is that just before Diddy was hit with his first lawsuit, he had started giving publishing rights back to his former artists. And that includes Biggie, who signed to Diddy's label Bad Boy Entertainment upon its launch in 1993. But his former artists were saying that Diddy had already milked everything he could and the rights he was giving back were basically worth nothing. And it's funny and then you move on and you like something that he did on TikTok because he's funny. But for people that worked for six years of their life and and entered an industry where somebody made what 48 million yeah, like dollars and we didn't even see a penny of that and we were in thongs and five inch heels for years of our lives on stage no. and not not any of it did we see and the measly amount of change that mtv paid us we don't even get to feel any benefit of that because they never brought the show back and they don't play it in reruns so we can't even get the hype of oh, hey, I remember this. They're cult classics. Let me hire her for something yeah. like all of them got. Just just literally used and abused. Danny D. Kane, Aubrey O'Day. Uh, that's crazy. Like you can't even get royalties. Because um, that show was crazy, making the band. Uh, I just feel like, again, one of them situations where you get excited for the, the the chance of fame and and you have this talent but it's like it's like what i get to work with diddy oh we made it we about to be famous yeah give me the paper sign my name boom and, and look at the end results here man 48 million and they didn't see a penny of that that's crazy man crazy right? Mm -hmm. Jersey Shore kids are making millions of dollars. In addition, like I said, Prince possibly knew about the freak offs Diddy was having and chose to stay as far away from him as possible. I mean, Jason Lee recently said that the first Diddy party he attended was at Prince's house. And the strange thing he realized was that no one was allowed to bring their own security to the party. Yeah, the first Diddy party I went to was at Prince's house. So you want to go to Prince's house to the Diddy party where Tyrese is performing and Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher are swinging on swings. That is what's happening on the other side of the wall. And so the one thing that makes this party different than a, a Jamie Foxx party or any other celebrity party that wrangles a bunch of young women or women or guys or whatever, too, is that Diddy didn't let you bring your security in the party. Who knows? Maybe after the party Diddy held at Prince's house, he realized exactly what was going on and cut ties. Now let's touch a little bit on Diddy's former bestie Jay-Z and how he was involved with Prince. Allegedly, when Prince was having all his problems with Warner, at one point he put his trust in Jay-Z because he thought that Jay-Z had the interests of his artists at heart. So he worked up a deal with Tidal, a streaming service substantially owned by Jay-Z's company, Rock Nation. But in 2016, the administration of Prince's estate authorized NPG Records to file a copyright lawsuit against Rock Nation for putting 15 Prince albums on Tidal. The lawsuit said that Tidal was only given an exclusive 90-day license for a newly recorded studio album, Hit and & Run, and that Tidal had committed copyright infringement by putting 15 Prince albums up on the streaming service. The thing is, Tidal said they got a license both in writing and orally to be the first streaming outlet to distribute many of Prince's albums. But 
NPG, on the other hand, said that the agreement between Title and Prince and the equity term sheet was fabricated and backdated to appear authentic. They said that Prince certainly made a deal with Title for a recorded studio album titled Hit and Run, but NPG said there's no evidence that the agreement contemplated other works or that Prince was ever issued Title equity before the dispute arose, and Rock Nation ignored repeated requests to provide documentation or evidence of any oral and implied agreement granting such rights. So basically what people have been trying to say with this is that Jay-Z and Diddy are birds of a feather. Literally, two people cut from the same cloth, and they are both capable of doing the same things. According to many people, when Prince was cautioning people and artists about the machine, he was talking about people like Diddy and Jay-Z. And just like many others before and after him, he had to go. But what are your thoughts about everything Prince tried to expose about the music industry? Do you think that's what ultimately led to his untimely death? Sound off? I'm going to just say yes. Now, look, you go again. I said, stop going places where you got to sign NDAs, where they don't let you bring your phones and. Um, and. Um, not being able to, able to bring your own security. Oh, no. Hell no. Now, I've been to comedy shows where. um they they give you you get to keep your phone but they put it in that like this thing that buttons and you can't oh, like that one girl on that video was saying you can't open it until you leave because a lot of these shows be going on these like we went to see like joe coy or you see somebody that is going to be at a it's going to go on a um like a netflix or something so they don't want people recording they'll say it so many times and so shops show signs saying no recording i get that but like these these parties these mansion parties and stuff i'm just like what was the conversation like and when was the diddy parties at prince house like was it like how many Cause this this is Prince we talking about. I'm just wondering when did he catch when? Like, yo, y'all know what be going on at the parties at Diddy parties, and Prince like, he can use my house. Like, when when? How many parties before? How many freak offs were they before there, and then you end up going to Prince? That is just crazy to me. But all this information in this video, I mean, really, really think about that. They didn't show that Simpsons clip, but just go type it in. Simpsons Prince or Prince whatever. Because um, that's what they're saying happened with Biggie. You know, a lot of these artists uh, or these labels make more money off of them when they're dead. So. All right. Peace out.